Welcome back to TDH Deck Building. I'm your host, Demo, and this is a Commander Quick Brew for Commander 2021. So what the heck does that mean? Well, basically what I decided to do with these spoilers is, since I talk about the legendary creatures first, I thought maybe I would do a more prepared rundown of how you can build these commanders. Because I thought, you know, as a content creator, spoilers are really kind of useless after the fact, you know? Like I look at my call time spoilers and nobody's watching those videos, right? And they're never gonna. Why would they? They've already been spoiled, right? So a spoiler video is only good for about a week and then everyone just, you know, you're never gonna watch it again. So these new commanders, if I actually give sort of a, a little bit of a detailed rundown of how you can use them, um, that means a year from now, if somebody wants to build one of these commanders, they can watch this video and get some ideas, right? And I'm just going to give a quick rundown of how I would build this commander if I were building a deck with it. So starting out with Guyom, Master Chef, two, a black and a green, four mana, Troll Warlock, five, three. He's got Trample, okay? And he's a Master Chef. I mean, the, the flavor here is fantastic, obviously. Um, at the beginning of your end step, create a number of food tokens equal to the number of non-token creatures you had enter the battlefield under your control this turn. So I, again, like he's a chef, he's cooking food. Uh, every time there's a new creature entering the battlefield, he's making a meal for them. The flavor is fantastic, obviously. Then you pay one, sacrifice a food, target creature gains indestructible until end of turn, tap it. So obviously right away you think, okay, well, this is a food deck. You know, you're going to be using all the food token cards that have already been made. Yes and no. Yes, there is some food token cards that have been made that you can use in this deck. Feasting Troll King works great in this deck, right? It's going to enter the battlefield and give you three food tokens if you cast it from your hand, obviously. You know, it, this card would be ridiculous otherwise. Sacrifice three foods. Return it from your graveyard to the battlefield. That's a really powerful ability. That's obviously why you... So that that's an auto include in this deck, right? Because you're going to be getting those food tokens all the time. Gluttonous Troll is going to enter the battlefield and create a number of food tokens equal to the number of opponents you have. So three, likely. You're going to get three food tokens off of this guy, too. And then you can sacrifice another non-land permanent, and it gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. And it does have Trample. Savvy Hunter, though, is probably the best. This is an absolutely an auto include in this deck you know when it attacks or blocks gives you a food token okay that doesn't really matter the important part is you can sacrifice those foods to draw cards so that's always going to be good in any deck like i was thinking if your strategy is i'm going to play a bunch of creatures and get a bunch of food i don't know if that's a great strategy you're getting one food token per creature that's what all you're getting this is non-token so you can't play an avenger of zendikar and get 30 food tokens it, it's only going to give you one and, and you could go the route of i'm going to play a bunch of one drops or even zero drops. Like, I guess Dryad Arbor would be great in this deck because, you know, it's free and it is a creature, right? That's a creature entering the battlefield. So that's going to give you a food token. You could put Ornithopter in there. It'll give you a food token. For me, though, this deck is simply a good stuff creatures deck. It really is. Take a Vorinclex, for example, right? One of the things about Vorinclex is it's... Vorinclex is what I consider an arch enemy card. You play it and all of a sudden you become the arch enemy and everyone's going to remove it as fast as they can. You play your Vorinclex, right? And this just protects your Vorinclex. It creates a food token. So you're guaranteed to get a food token every time you cast a creature, right? Your Vorinclex comes in, you get a food token, then you just need to leave that one mana up and it's going to make your Vorinclex indestructible so that nobody can remove it, right? So to me, that's sort of where I would go with this deck is I would, yeah, I would put those other food token matters cards in here but there's not many there's like four or five or maybe six at most that you would fit in this deck and then the rest i would just make good stuff creatures where i just play a creature that my opponents are probably going to want to remove it and because i can make it indestructible it's going to save it from getting removed also keep in mind that ability you know sacrifice a food target creature gains indestructible in a turn tap it you can use that on your opponents right as an added bonus that can be a political tool. I mean, first of all, if your opponent has a Blightsteel Colossus and they're going to run you over with it, you can sacrifice a food, make it indestructible, which who cares? It's indestructible anyway, but you're going to tap it, right? So you can use this ability to tap your opponent's creatures down, uh, which is interesting. Also, again, you can use it to save an opponent's creature if you want to make a friend. Uh, you can use it to tap down other creatures that might be attacking other players. There is other ways to use that ability, which which I like how open and ended it is too also, right? But again, for me, this guy is just good stuff creatures deck, and then I can protect my creatures with my commander's ability. Next up, Yodora Grave Gardener, and this is a really interesting one. Four and a green, 
five mana tree folk druid five five whenever another non-token creature you control dies you may return it to the battlefield face down under its owner's control it's a forest land as soon as i saw this card you know i just started going oh man you could do this you could do that right i started going a whole bunch of directions that didn't actually work for example, I was thinking, okay, well, Sylvan Advocate would be great in this deck, right? Because you have these creatures that are also forest lands, and they're going to get plus two, plus two. But that doesn't work because they're not creatures, right? Eudora says they lose all other types or abilities. I was also thinking, okay, they're face down, so let's do Morph, right? I was thinking Morph would work, right? Because if a creature has the Morph ability you can always activate it to turn it face up. So we can put like a Den Protector in here, and then when it dies, it comes back face down, and then we can flip it over again. But Yodora, they come back into play face down as a forest and lose abilities, so they're not going to have the morph ability anymore. So that doesn't work either. So I had all these, man, I was going crazy uh, brewing all these ideas, and then I was like, oh wait, that doesn't work, and that doesn't work. They really sort of locked it down so you can't go crazy with this. However, there are a lot of cards uh, that I think were great in this deck. Timber Protector is probably the best fit. Four and a green, Tree Folk Warrior. Four, six, other Tree Folk you control get plus one, plus one. Other Tree Folk and Forest you control are indestructible. That's the big one. That's that's really going to be fantastic in the deck. Again, it's going to make our commander indestructible, right? So that, I think, is an auto-include in this deck. Baru, uh, Fist of Krosa might work, you know? I mean, obviously his grandeur ability isn't going to work. When a Forest comes into play... Green creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and gain trample in a turn, right? So that's going to be happening a lot. And obviously, any sort of landfall thing is going to work in this deck too really, really well. I just think that, you know, that's been done to death. The route I like to go is I'm just going to play a bunch of creatures, okay? So I'm going to play my Wood Elves, for example. Play my Wood Elves, I get my Forest out of my deck. Then I sacrifice my Wood Elves. So I would have a bunch of Sack Outlets in here, right? I would have High Market. I would have Evolutionary Leap, stuff like that. You sacrifice it, it comes back into play as a Forest, right? So you're getting double value out of it. I would just use this as a value commander board wipes are going to be great you know it's it's uh you know if this guy was white it'd be fantastic because you could just sit there playing your creatures board wiping and your board wipes basically turn into a ramp because all your creatures are going to flip over and become lands do you really even need a lot of ramp in this deck i don't even think you do like you think of a sakura tribe elder for example that comes into play you're going to sacrifice to get a land then it comes back into play as a land so now it's you're getting two lands off your sakura tribe elder essentially which is fantastic so that's the route i would go i would go a bunch of creatures that have like ETBs and stuff, or I can sacrifice them, cost the caterpillars, another one I can sacrifice it, destroy a artifact or enchantment, then it turns into ramp. Then I would also put stuff in like bull elephant. Four mana, elephant four four. When bull elephant enters the battlefield, sacrifice it unless you return two forests you control the owner's hand. So now I can play this and return a couple of those forests that are actually creatures. So my Sakura Tribe Elder and my Wood Elves, which are now face down creatures, they're forests, so I can return them to my hand, and obviously when they go back to my hand, now they're creatures again, and then I can reuse their ability, right? So I think that's great. Query and Ranger, Scrib Ranger, they both have that ability as well, where you can return a forest you control the owner's hand to untap target creature, right? So I would do that. I would do, you know, I'm playing lots of Eternal Witness, Wood Elves, stuff like that, and then I sacrifice them get value that way. They come back into play as a forest, get value that way. Now I'm ramping. Then I can return a forest I control in my hand to use my Scrib Ranger's ability. And then I can replay my Eternal Witness, get something I'm great, right? So there's just a whole lot of synergy, a whole lot of value going on there. Just a great value deck. I honestly 100% would build this deck. I really like where it's going. And lastly today, Tavash Gloom Summoner. Four and a black. Five mana human warlock. He's a four four. He's got lifelink. At the beginning of your end step, if you gained life this turn, you may pay X life where X is the amount of life you gain this turn. If you do, create an XX black demon creature token with flying. So obviously you want to be gaining life. Um, your commander has lifelink, so you can just attack with your commander. The important thing to note here is you may pay X, so you don't have to use the ability. But if you do use the ability, X is the amount of life you gained. So there is no, maybe you, you pay as much as you want or something. No, if you gained one life, you pay one life and you get a one one. If you gained five life, you pay five life, right? You pay the exact amount of life you gained this turn. If you gained 10 life from three different sources, you gain 10 life this turn, therefore you pay 10 life and you get a 10-10 Black Demon Creature Token. I think the best way to go with this is the big 
life gain, right? There, there's a couple of commanders in this set and in Strixhaven that are, you want to be gaining life a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. You want those life gain triggers. This guy, I think we want the big life gain, right? Obviously this guy goes in a lot of decks. Look, I'm not going to talk about the decks that this guy goes in. He goes in a bunch for sure. As a commander, we want to gain a ton of life. So you think of like an exsanguinate, right? Stuff that you normally would play in a black deck anyway. I mean, obviously the life gaining part of this deck, I don't need to talk about that either because there's just lots of stuff in black where you're doing that. So I exsanguinate for six, let's say. My opponents are going to lose six life each. I gain 18 life. Now I've gained 18 life this turn. I'm going to pay 18. Again, you can't choose. It has to be 18. It has to be the amount that you gained. You pay 18 life. You get an 18, 18 black demon creature token flying i think that's the way to go with this deck the big shot stuff it doesn't have to be a drain black does drain really really well but i think that just a big life gain effect the bigger the better because you're only getting one creature right remember you don't, you don't want to gain one life then you get a one one black demon creature token every turn that doesn't seem great i mean i guess you can use it to sacrifice for something but i think ideally you want bigger big demon flying creatures is the way to go with this deck which of the moors is an auto include in this deck obviously right at the beginning of your end step if you gain life this turn each opponent sacrifices a creature and you return a creature from your grave to hand that's just fantastic so that's an auto include in the deck there are a few effects like that in mono black there's not many also artifacts like well of lost dreams is definitely going to go in this deck right whenever you gain life you pay x where x is less than or equal to the amount of life you gain so this one you get to choose right that's what's great about well lost dreams if you gain 10 life you can pay three mana or five mana or 10 mana however much you want and you draw that many cards so that's going to be an auto include in the deck for sure there are a couple you know i looked up some cards that care about demons mark of the oni two and a black enchant creature you control enchanted creature okay three mana to gain control of someone's creature is fantastic However, at the beginning of the end step, if you control no demons, sacrifice Mark of the Oni. So you have to control a demon. So this works great if your commander's a demon, I guess. But we're almost guaranteed to have a demon in play all the time. So I think Mark of Oni is, is probably an auto include in this deck. And then we're going to be paying life lots, right? So Font of Agonies, one man enchantment. Whenever you pay life, put that many blood counters on Font of Agonies. So we're, this is going to be just covered in counters, right? You're going to pay two, one in a black, remove four blood counters from Fauna Managonese to destroy target creature. We're always going to be able to, right? This is going to have four blood counters on it, probably always. Uh, I would imagine we'll probably, like your commander is a 4-4. Four, four, so if you even if you just connect with him, he gains you four life, you pay four, you put four counters on Fauna Agonies, you get a 4-4 four, four demon token. Like that in itself is good enough. And then we can take the, those counters off to destroy a creature. I just think there's this is going to auto-include again because it's always going to have lots of counters on it. And then, of course, Villas, Broker of Blood, right? I mean, I'm sure everyone's seen this guy before. Uh, whenever you lose life, you draw that many cards. So if you're paying life, that's losing life, right? Um, obviously, Villas' other ability, pay two life, target creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn, feeds into its own other ability. I mean, it's eight mana, but I mean, whatever. We're in black, so I, I'm sure you can figure out a way to get this guy out quicker. But we're just going to be drawing a ton of cards off of this guy, right? And he's a demon. I mean, you can go a little bit demon tribal with this. The only thing is there's not a ton of a support for demon tribal, so I don't know if you want to go that route. I'd say it's a fairly obvious build around. You just have to be careful with that. You may pay X where X is the amount of life you gained, right? That That is, there's no wiggle room there. It's if you gain five life, you pay five life and you get a five, five demon and that's it, right? So I think the larger amount of life you gain on your turn, the better. So that is it for today. That is, I guess, my first Commander Quick Brew. And that's probably how I will be doing these Legendary Creature spoilers. Just for the Legendary Creatures when they're spoiled, a quick rundown of how I would build around a Commander like that. So that is it for today, and thanks for tuning in.